SCSI London. It's a bit of a strange name, but I've got the original, you know. I wanted to start a YouTube channel for quite a while, but I couldn't quite decide what to go with. I had a few ideas, none of them seemed like they had any life in them or longevity in them, so I thought, well, you know, keep looking, keep, keep it in the back of your mind, keep working on it, something will come up. And eventually that did. And it came from an unusual source. Not that unusual, really, I guess. It was a YouTube channel, another one gave me an idea. There were actually, there were several of them gave me ideas, but there was one was the catalyst that made me think, I could do that. Because I've been enjoying watching YouTube for quite a few years now. I mean, I've watched it for years on and off, but never as a, as a choice of channels, you know, it was usually the main channels, the, you know, your TV channels and stuff. And I thought, well, I started looking into YouTube and I started finding things more and more that, that worked more for me. So I thought, I'm sure I can do something. I'm sure I can. And the channels I've been watching were mainly entertainment stuff. You know, they were travel-based things and maybe funny stuff and things like that. But it got me thinking, you know, there must be a way that I can do something. I have so many interests, so many different things that I like to do and try. And I thought there's got to be something amongst that that's going to be of interest to others maybe. Especially as you get a bit older, you realize you've got a lot more experience than, you know, people younger than you. So you've done a lot of things and maybe other people can learn something from it. Who knows? That'd be great. One of the channels I started watching regularly a few years back was, uh, was a channel that was quite kind of a relaxing thing to watch in a way with a bit of fascination. And I used to like watching it on a Sunday morning before going off to band practice, rehearsing my band. Anyway, the channel that I used to love watching and still do when it's on is Ghost Town Living. It's about the guy from Austin, Brent, and he bought a ghost town. And I, I've been to Death Valley, been through it a couple of times. And there's a place nearby called Swansea, <laughs> which is uh, another coincidence. Anyway, he bought this ghost town up in the hills and it's the story of him bringing this ghost town back to life. And it's a fantastic watch for me anyway. I really admired his sort of commitment to the thing. I also admired just the production value of his videos. I thought they were really impressive. You know, I could see just from watching it, the time and effort that he must have put in to making these videos. You know, all the varied scenes, the different styles, and I've watched them improve over the years as well. And I thought, well done, mate. I'm super impressed with this. You're up there in the sticks in the middle of nowhere with hardly any electricity, no water, tough life, trying to build this ghost town from nothing and still making time to film all this stuff and get it out there once a week. Cheers, Brent. I love watching your stuff. It's really cool, super high quality. I'm always very impressed. You've always got an interesting storyline, even though you live in a ghost town. Anyway, thanks for the influence. Let's keep going. Right, moving on to one of my other favorite videos. In my mind, everybody knows these YouTube stars, but maybe you don't. So, my next superstar who inspired me, he really kept me thinking about how on earth do you make this stuff sound interesting? How on earth can you be in the middle of nowhere and still make something sound interesting? And that, to me, was utterly fascinating. And I am, of course, talking about a certain Mr. Bald and Bankrupt. How can one guy on his own, out in the sticks in the middle of nowhere in Russia, looking for all things Soviet, make the most remote, boring, back out of nowhere village seem like a fascinating, interesting, and exciting place to visit? Well, I know, I get it, because I love travel, and I love intrigue of, what's around the next corner, what's this village like, whatever. I love all that. But the way he delivered it and the way he sort of enthuses about it, it's his sheer enthusiasm for it all. Made me think, you know, I just got to keep watching this. I got to find out what's next. Eternally optimistic. Nothing's a problem. Everything can be fixed. He's got an added skill that I don't have, and that is just going up to strangers and random people and just starting a conversation, having a chat. He's got a very pleasing, very sort of upbeat demeanor. And that goes a long way for, for someone like him. Um, it's a skill I got to work on. We'll get there maybe, or maybe not. Maybe I don't need it, I'm not sure, but it really works for him. And I wanted to sort of 
analyze his channel in that sense because I thought it's very cleverly done anyway. Anyway, turns out he's got millions of viewers, I think, and he does really well off the back of it. And he's branched out to all sorts of different sort of exploration type of stuff. But Bold and Bankrupt is my next one. Absolutely brilliant channel. And then probably off the back of that, of me watching Bold and Bankrupt, it sent me a recommendation. I thought, ah, let's have a look at this. And it's one called Ellie from Russia. And it's just some young woman, I suppose, who enjoys travel, speaks great English, and she explores, well, the world, but generally the Russia, Russian state. Um, and she builds a great storyline about, about what it's like to live in Russia today. So you get to see a little bit behind, well, not quite the Iron Curtain, but you know, what Russia's really like. Not the stories that we just get here in the West, all these sort of tainted views that they tell us. You get to see normal villages, normal people. And it's great to see all the different cultures and lifestyles within that enormous, country. These are not in any particular order, by the way. Definitely not. Who's up next? Oh yeah. My favorite clown-like Top Gear wannabes. <laughs> Why I watch these idiots week after week, I will never know. But I do. I feel like I know them. I feel like they're my mates. I love stories of male friendship, if you like, when mates, you know, they're just best mates, you can just get on, have a laugh, take the piss, have a great time. And for me, the sort of epitome of that is <clears throat> the guys from Hell on Earth. They are fantastic. They're just three northern idiots, quite honestly. All due respect, guys, but you know, you know who you are. And they just go around exploring, urban exploring, it started off, and now they're doing some other stuff, but the sort of interaction, the friendship between them is great. Lloydy obviously loves Norton. They're obviously like big buddies going back years. Poor old Al gets a hard time. He tries to be funny. They take the piss out of him. He's ever so slightly on the edges. He's basically James May. Yeah, they just go around together every weekend in their van, having adventures all around the country, you know, exploring places or going to ruins or Scottish castles or God knows what. It's the banter that keeps it going. Norton's obviously very funny in his own way. He knows it. Lloyd is the intelligent one. He pisses himself laughing at everything. And it's just, it's just great light entertainment. So nice one, lads. Cheers for influencing me. That's hell on earth. Look at that sun now. This is great. Bit of flare there for you all. There we go, how about that? Who's up next? Well, this one this is a classic. Talk about an original idea. Who the hell would come up with this as a concept? It is just genius. Everybody half interested in any kind of geography will have thought of this at some point. Geo Wizard, Tom. I feel like he's my mate too. I also feel like he's my neighbor. <laughs> he looks like him and sounds like him. The Brummie. Who would come up with the idea of thinking they can cross a country in a dead straight line? Plan it, execute it, and actually try and, you know, try and do the thing. It's madness, utter madness. But he's done it, or attempted to do it, on numerous occasions. Now, we're talking about effort going into a video. That is effort. I mean, just the planning alone to prepare for it blows my mind. I love travel, adventure, all that sort of stuff. And this is doing it on your own doorstep. And it's just, just genius, it really is. In between, he does a bunch of other stuff, which I'm not remotely interested in. Just thought you should know that, Tom. Next up, we've got another bit of a strange one, and another Tom. Tommy, actually. They call him Tommy. His name's Tommy, I think, from Sabbatical. He got on my radar, probably, because I watch a lot of, like, travel stuff and, you know, world travel videos and vloggers doing strange countries and places I probably won't get to anymore. Tommy's an interesting one. He's an American, and he's a very sort of dry, sort of almost bland sort of sense of humour, but brilliant with languages. And that's probably his, his niche, I think. And he, he travels a lot in Africa and, well, all sorts of places, really, Asia and anywhere. You never know where he's going to pop up next. A lot of the stuff, again, is quite mundane, but somehow or other he holds your interest and your fascination, you know. Nothing usually over exciting happens, you know. He gets into a bit of trouble here and there and he sometimes travels with somebody else. But for some reason, I can't put my finger on it, why his channel is actually quite watchable. And it's obviously got a lot of viewers. It's one of those ones I can watch and I can drop off halfway through and pick up another time. Probably because they're quite long sometimes, but yeah. Tommy, it's good stuff. Sabbatical, getting out there, traveling the world. 
It wasn't meant to be top 10 YouTubers who've influenced me, but it's kind of looking that way because yeah, they all have influenced me in one way or another. Hopefully I can inspire some other people to have a crack at YouTube as well, you never know. So who's up next? Ozzy, Mr. Bo Miles, that man. That guy can turn anything into an adventure. In fact, he calls himself the backyard adventurer, which is absolutely spot on because he is literally the backyard adventurer. Now that taught me that you probably can have adventures in your own backyard, more or less, or, you know, in your neighborhood or just around the corner. You don't have to go to the other side of the world to do it. Although that is nice, but you can also do it in your own doorstep. If you're creative enough, you can come up with ideas to have adventures in your own neighborhood, in your own street, in the parks nearby or wherever it is. You just have to use your imagination to come up with something. So that, in a sense, inspired me that, hang on, I don't have to go chasing all around the world all the time, looking for adventures, which are clearly out there. I can do it in my own neighborhood, London, effectively, and possibly beyond. So Bo inspired me on that one. Basically, anybody who's fit and healthy and looks after themselves and inspires me to keep going, that's the sort of people I like. And he's definitely one of them. Big up Bo Miles, cracking channel. So the last one on my list, weirdly, is probably the channel I've watched the least. I've seen maybe five, perhaps eight, 10 of his videos. Maybe there's a sign in that, I'm not sure. But, but this was the one that actually sparked my proper idea. Because what he's doing is basically exactly what I just said about Bo Miles. He is out exploring his backyard, more or less. But he's doing it in a different way. He's doing it on two wheels. And that made me think, well, maybe I can do it on two wheels. Maybe I can explore my backyard and go to places that other people don't go. And it got me thinking, hang on a minute, I thought. I've lived in London a long time now. And I'm not from London, but I know it very well. And I've lived in lots of different places in London. And I know my way around London. And I know my way around by bike. I've got something here. I think there's something in it. So John Hicks, let me tell you about John Hicks's channel. A guy, youngish guy, I guess, in his 30s maybe, and he rides around on a Suron, which is a fast electric motorbike. And he's from South Central LA. And I've always had a bit of a fascination with South Central LA. Believe it or not, I kind of got into rap music years ago. And you know, there was just all this South Central business. And, but I knew, and I still know, that I can't go to South Central LA. It just ain't safe for someone like me. I'd stand out like a sore thumb. But I've often wondered what it's really like, you know, just what it looks like. And John Hicks showed me that. He goes out there on a Suron, speeding around South Central, showed me what the neighborhoods look like and the back alleys and stuff like that. And you know, he quite openly says that, well, he doesn't stop for long. He doesn't stay put in one place for too long. He's a bit on edge at times, you know, and he's always talking. He's giving a running commentary and he's telling you about this. And I thought, and once I watched a few of them, I realized that it was all kind of similar. The scenery wasn't even that varied. You know, big wide streets, bungalows, houses, back alleys, all with cars in them, people hanging about here and there. And it didn't change that much from one week to the next. And I suddenly thought, I live in London. Everything here is really varied. You can just go two minutes down the road and be in a completely different area, completely different neighborhood. I can include sights and sounds of big football stadiums, uh, the central London areas, back alleys, housing estates, posh areas, poor areas, the whole lot. And I can ride through them and show everybody in the world what London really looks like. And this is exactly what inspired my idea. I suddenly thought, I've actually got as much, if not more on my doorstep than John Hicks. And everybody loves his stuff. I mean, yeah, he's probably got some good commentary to go with it. He's, he's, he's an American, so he's, he's chatty, you know, he talks away. But I realized that I've got so much more visually to offer and so much more history and so much more interest in and around the London area alone. And I thought, yeah, I can do this. I can build a channel all about the unsung heroes, those unsung neighborhoods of London that people don't get to see. That if they come to visit London, they only go to the, you know, your, your main central sites like Buckingham Palace and Trafalgar Square and that. And I thought, I can show them what those other areas look like that I know and that, that other Londoners know. And I thought, there must be something in this. There's got to be in it. So I decided on an idea to build a storyline based on all the different places I lived in London. 
starting from the very beginning right up to more or less where I live now. And during that time I would tell a different story each week about this house I lived in, the flat I lived in, why I lived there, how I got there, what the area was like. And I would circle the neighborhood and show, you know, what it's like living there and revisit some of the old places I used to go to and, and things like that. Basically build up a wide picture of London and what it can be like as somebody moving into the area and what life might be like. You know, it takes you on a, a random journey. I thought, yeah, there's got to be something in this. There's got to be people out there who are interested in the real London, not just the tourist stuff, you know? I'm sure of it. It's targeted towards maybe people who are interested, maybe family have lived here, maybe there's someone on the other side of the world who's coming to university. Maybe somebody used to live here and they used to live in an area and this actually happened. Hugh, shout out. You know, you might live in an area and you've moved away, you've moved back home, but you, you want to see it again and say, oh yeah, I used to live there, that was great. Or maybe you have friends. Maybe you live in Australia and you had friends that went traveling and they ended up in London and they were living somewhere in Acton or something. And they told you all about it and you thought, what the hell's Acton look like? I can show you that, you know? So I think there's some mileage in this. And then I realized that, okay, after I've done that story, I can just go around all the random boroughs of London showing different areas like Shepherd's Bush, Wandsworth, I don't know, Acton, whatever. Just keep going and it's endless, absolutely endless. I think there's some mileage in this and I hope it's mildly entertaining. <laughs> I'm working on that and I'm working on the, the commentary to go with it. But you know, we'll get there. It's gonna improve week by week. It's gonna get better and better. So in a nutshell, that's the theory behind the channel, Scuzzy London. Scuzzy being a bit run down, bit rough, rough around the edges, you know, not your polished London that you might see in all its fancy buildings. It's the sort of real stuff out the back, out in the residential areas where, where the people live, out in the burbs. So yeah, the scuzzy parts, you know, we're not gonna be afraid to go to those areas that, that all the tourists are quite rightly too a bit concerned to go there because there's no reason to go to some of these places for tourists, but they might still be interested, interested to see what it looks like, you know? The back streets of Camden instead of just Camden High Street and the market, things like that. So that's the concept behind the channel. Anyway, that's it. I've pro <laughs> Keep that in or not? <laughs> I've probably rambled on enough now. I really wanted to do this one for a while. I wanted to give a bit of a background into uh, the people, the YouTubers themselves that have influenced me to have a go and start my own channel and I'm um, giving it a crack. I'm gonna say, if you are thinking of going in and starting your own YouTube channel, you know, as they all say, just do it, you know, just start and all that, and it's true. But if you want to avoid burnout or disappointment and that sort of thing just go in with your eyes open because i went in i realized that you know this is not a short-term thing it's going to take time it's going to take a while to build it up it's going to take a lot of effort and commitment to be doing this and making videos every week there's a lot of time involved there's a huge amount of effort in actually doing the rides the researching preparing getting out there you know, sorting out all the files, the editing, all the back of house boring stuff that nobody talks about. All of that stuff he's doing, and I knew that. So I kind of went in with my eyes open, knowing full well that that was going to be a commitment to take time. I'm prepared to give it a go, give him a best shot. So if you are thinking of doing it, crack on, go for it. You're going to need to keep at it for a while. And I'll see you on the next adventure somewhere out there on Scuzzy London.